head. Hello, everybody. Gabe, the Izzard here, standing in front of the Harrison Daily Times. I am in Harrison, Arkansas. No, I am not joining the Ku Klux Klan. I am on a in-state little tour, and I just so happened to stop in Harrison, Arkansas, and here I am in front of the courthouse, the Boone County Courthouse, on the town square. Going to check out some cool things today. Not the townhouse cafe, but I am going to be seeing something cool. Going down to the Mystic Caverns. Never been there, seen the sign a zillion times, but I'm going to go. Now go ahead, tag along. Now this is not the typical Dollar General that you see. It's the uh, old school. Going to go check out this mural down here. No town square is a town square without a post office. And they also have the farmer's market going on. We're walking the square. And then go over there and see what they have at the farmer's market. Very important. Always shop local. So when a normal cow dies, they leave a skull, but what if that skull or that cow had been bitten by a nuclear spider? You would have a Spider-Man cow skull. This side of the square seems to be a little more dried up than the other sides, but they are some large historic buildings. That one says 1914 on it. And here is a Civil War monument. It says that Boone County men served in both armies. And then here is uh, another Confederate monument. right next to it is the Spanish American War Veterans Memorial that was put here in 1941 interesting there are many many wonderful memorials around here this one is for Jack Williams which was a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient for his uh, actions on Iwo Jima pretty cool and there's a bench that you can sit right here and think about that and here is a memorial of the Mountain Meadows massacre which had 140 men and women that were immigrating from Arkansas to California that were set up by the Mormons and were attacked by Indians in Utah. They attacked them. The Mormons came under a guise of a truce flag and then slaughtered and kidnapped. This was the path from Crooked Creek, which is right here in Harrison, all through Indian Territory, and they made it to Mountain Meadows, Utah. On the back side of the monument are the names of those people. And here we are again. We're on the south side, which seems to be the, the main entrance of the courthouse. Nice red building. And uh, there's not a town square that's not a town square without the gazebo. And this right here is the Triangle of Honor dedicated to the men and women that served in the armed forces from Boone County. 
and this is a war memorial of the wars that we've been in World War One, II, Vietnam, Korea, War on Terror, and there's even a blank one for who knows. And then the Jack Williams Medal of Honor Memorial on top. It really looks like Back to the Future could be filmed here, except there's not a clock tower. Hi. Good. ever watch my videos you know I'm a sucker for red brick buildings and now you'll know I'm a sucker for a fiddle not the violin what the fiddle and I got both so on to the mystic caverns and right as I turn on the video, the last bell rang. The bell rings at the top of the hour. On to Mystic Caverns. And I've made it to Mystic Caverns. Been on my bucket list for a while. I've been to Blanchard Springs Caverns, Blanchard Springs. Now I'm going to Mystic Caverns. They are open. I'm not using my little handy dandy gimbal. So if it's a little shaky, my bad. Ticket is paid. They have a nice rock shop here. With lots of beautiful, different collection of rocks. Geodes. 
dice, stone goblets, miniature animals, and an apple. Some geodes, fossilized rocks. Very interesting stuff just in the gift shop. Another reason behind its name, though, and we will get into that when we get closer to it. What makes that interesting is that these grow about half an inch to an inch every hundred years or so. Not natural cave dust. That's actually going to be smoke damage. And that is going to come from a combination of kerosene and lanterns and having a moon giant cell down here. You'll also notice in this cave, unlike our other cave, a lot of our stalactites have been broken off. Now, the majority of that is just good old-fashioned vandalism, unfortunately. Some of that is going to be earthquake damage. That's the switch that has the power. It does have a few slick spots. Nice path. It finds its way down. Very safe. That one comes from the 60s when dog pack was here, when somebody figured out that each one of these little tubes has a different tone pitch, kind of like a xylophone. Now you should demonstrate that to people by leaning over here and hitting it with a flashlight. We don't do that anymore. The reason we don't do that anymore is if you look right here, you can see a little over 20 years worth of damage from people continuously rigging flashlights. Yeah, if you go to a little town called Jasper down the road, in their museum, one of their old photographs of the area shows a guy asleep with his head right there on that rock at the same time those moonshine stills were down here. big white formation here. Everybody else calls that our five layer wedding cake. I call it our biscuit and gravy fountain. <laughs> and this room is the lowest room we go to in this cave. We're about 65 feet underground right here. With it being lower than anywhere else, it doesn't have that smoke damage that the rest of the cave has. And
All right, now, this room is my favorite room in the entire game. I'm gonna start with my little wishing wells here. These are man-made. They were put in by dog from the bathroom sink. The reason they put those in is they wanted kind of a reflective pool in here. And if it'll collaborate with me today, if you look on this wall directly across from me here, you can kind of see what they wanted through the entire room. And unfortunately, they weren't able to do that, so they left us the wishing well. Well, you like to say that they're kind of magic. The reason we say that is if you throw a penny in there and you come back in about five years, you can buy that same penny in the gift shop or this little groove right here. If you look over here, you see another groove at that same height. The reason those grooves are there is because back during Prohibition, they put a wooden floor in this room. And they turned this entire room into a bar. Now, this room here is where they would have housed us still. They would have been back here along this wall. And it would have run the length of the wall to right about here. Now, if you look around in here, you'll notice how much darker that smoke damage is in here compared to the rest of the cave. And that is why you don't run moonshine still inside the cave. Folks are ready. We're going to put the phones away for just a moment. View from the restrooms. We just got finished with the first cave. We're going to the second cave. Masks are required. And this is the best smelling bathroom that I've ever been in in my entire life. Cedar is the way to go. On to the second cave. That Bigfoot? This cave was discovered in 1982, and we are going to be one of the few. Discovered in 67. 67. They opened it in 82. Ah, 67. Unfortunately, that bus didn't happen a lot around here. Yeah. People tend to just find dirt roads. Now, as we come down in here, if you look to your right, you'll notice a lot of these nice pristine white formations that are still growing, including this right here. This is what we call a drapery stalactite, or some of that cave bacon that I mentioned in the other cave. And as I also mentioned on the other tour, that grows about half an inch to an inch every hundred years or so, generally. We get to the bottom of this set of stairs as well, we do have another low spot that's going to be right here. <laughs> but we want to be that you should be fine. Now, definitely watch your step and use your handrails as we come down here. It is not the majority of these, but have come down sometime between 1812 and 1815 with a series of earthquakes along the Newton Bridge fault line. Oh, you alright? I got it. I literally fell on that same step yesterday. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I caught myself. If you look at it right there, it's got a sl it's almost rounded off. Yep. Yeah. Watch Sorry that step. That. I'm I'm good. I caught myself. <laughs> All right. Up to where you can see, then you've got about 
30 feet of earth on top of that before you would come through to the surface. So right now, you are right about eight stories underground. Now at the base of the hill, right in front of you folks, right over here, we have what we call our crystal bell. And to the left of the room, we have our cave dragon. This head right here, going down and back to his tail. And I'm going to flip on the rest of these lights and come down like that. The reason we call these soda straws is while they're still young like this, they're actually hollow on the inside. So you could potentially drink soda through one if you wanted to. We have this beautiful piece right here. This is one of those drapery stalactites. I like to call that cave bacon. We've got our not so leaning tower of Pisa right here. And our cave gnome right there. On the opposite side of the cave here. We've got our Shih Tzu here that's walking away from us. Has anybody here ever seen the movie The Secret Life of Pets? Yeah. The cat and the dog from The Secret Life of Pets. Right there. And these are only as far as the front door. Yeah, like <laughs> kind of makes me wonder why he's down here. Let me get a picture of him. Yeah, he probably doesn't really care that we're here. Let's see, try to get a good picture of him. There we go. All right, now, anyway, brimstone, like I was saying, the form of water comes in, and along its outer edges, there will be little bits of minerals left behind. Generally, calcium. And over time, those minerals do start to build up into these dams. Any questions on anything so far? Um, How big do the little salamanders? Uh, all right. Done with the second one. It was a eight story trek down a bunch of stairs. Basically one large room. It was pretty cool. Everybody's kind of huffing and puffing after making their way up. It was nice. These are two separate tours. I would say most definitely do both of them. You'll get your money's worth. It's basically $25 a piece. I'm gonna go through the gift shop and uh, probably head out. Jesus loves you this much. So after a five mile drive down the Irby Campground Road. We are at the Parker Hickman Homestead. Farmstead. There's some abandoned or not abandoned, but they're protected buildings, barn, whatnots. And a little brief history about who they were. The late 1830s is when this was established. Right down by the Buffalo River. Go check it out. Imagine sitting out here on this old front porch back when it was brand new. Welcome to come in. Looks like it's been updated with some plywood and some siding, but you can kind of get the idea what this was like in here. Oh, that spook city. Newspapers on the wall. You suck. The 
if there's a mix match of wallpapers and electricity. I have no idea where this leads to. It goes up. Huh. toasty up here and there's quite a few wasps. Mm, freak out. Talking to the park rangers just uh, right here. They're filming some things here also. This is the spring that fed the uh, farmstead right here. It's actually kind of dug out so they would have a good continual water source. Couple little livestock barns. There are, here's a trailhead. And he's, the uh, ranger said that there were people living here up until 1978, um, whenever, uh, until the uh, government took over and made it a national park. So, government coming in, this time kicking out the white man. And they're doing a filming right up there. That's the smokehouse. That one's kind of falling in there. Dilapidated barn. That's going to be on the website later. Loft. Smells like a barn in here. Over here would be the orchard. A nice gardening area. Uh, and if you have to uh, go drop a deuce, that's the spot down in the deep dark hole. Not, not open for business. <laughs> I do need to do some business though. <clears throat> and just down is the Irby Low Water Bridge. Basically a slab of concrete. Here in the middle of the river. I'm actually driving in the Buffalo River. Amazing, all the way out here, and there's still some weave. And now we've made it down to Boy Scout Camp Or to the Twin Falls waterfall trail so there's a short trail right up here it hasn't rained there's barely any water in the river so we'll see what they have up here hopefully we don't see any snakes hopefully all right so walking along we can hear a trickle sounds like a May have some luck here in the big Grand Reveal. There is some water coming from the top of the falls. This is the Twin Falls. You can see one here and one there. That's what makes them twins. And that's it.
The water is a little gross. And I'm going up. There's the lower trail. There's a, there was a fork in the road. It said top of the falls, one quarter mile. And that's what we're doing. Although we are heading in the opposite direction. I'm sure it cuts back because it's a pretty steep hill. It's a cool looking shelf rock right up here. It's a huge root ball of a tree that has fallen many, many years ago. Still sucking life from the earth. Traveling up. Camp Ore that way, Top of Falls that way. I don't know. Now that we've made the elevation, the trail is pretty flat. Cruising along this little bluff here. If it were raining, you could clamber up underneath there. Although it looks like there's been some fallen rocks. Short little walk. We were just right down there two minutes ago. And this is a very nice little bluff covering. Looks like someone has tried to ignite a fire there. Probably not a smart idea. Almost there. Some type of critter has lost a little bit of their hair. Could be living up in that domicile. Maybe. Oh. Dead squirrel? Got this cave going on. Just right off of the trail. And I'm going down. I'm going down. Oh. There you go. That's what I do. Right next to the hair. Normally, this would be filled with water. Flowing down. Ominously. And careening over the top of this waterfall. Down. 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 If you stepped in that slime, you would probably slide down to the bottom and you would definitely twist an ankle or something. I'm hearing voices. This is it, Twin Falls. This is the one. This is the two. If you notice they're coming from two different water sources. This one is coming from this direction. And this one is coming from that direction. Right there. Back at the camping or the uh, parking area at Camp Or, it was a very easy hike. Maybe about a mile total. And the roughest part of doing this hike is getting down the road. It's a very treacherous road, and there is a mud hole. Now we're on to Low Gap Cafe to get ourselves a bite to eat. My car is dusty. Finally made it to the Low Gap Cafe, and they got some Dog Patch USA memorabilia. Think of whoa, think I'm gonna get some pasta primavera. Right there. And a salad. I just annihilated a Caesar salad and I'm about to try the calamari appetizer with homemade seafood sauce. So the calamari was awesome. Now I'm about to hit this pasta primavera.
Okay, we just finished up our meal at the Low Gap Cafe. I even had key lime pie, which I'd never really eat key lime pie. It's not my thing. It was delicious. My wife says this is a 10, a 10 out of 10. I haven't had any pasta that was better than the pasta that I had today. The noodles themselves were the best noodles that I've ever had. Go to the Low Gap Cafe. This is it right there. It used to be a general store. Now it's a cafe and they also have dinner, like steak dinner. I've had a steak dinner here before and I've had a sandwich here before, but I've never had the pasta. This stuff is good. I bought a shirt from a restaurant. Whew. I feel good too, it wasn't heavy. All right, on to Ponca. Low Gap Cafe. So we made it to Ponca. We walked across the low water bridge and came up the hill and there is another farmstead. I didn't remember the name of it, but it's just a short little loop. It's about a half mile. I just walked through Spiderweb. It's a half mile loop. Not much, but here you go. Another barn. It's unlawful to enter. Unless you're a mule or a mule herder. And the uh, wide trail turned into a narrower trail. Coming out of that thick trail down here to the chicken coop. And the old outhouse, which I could probably use right about now. I could always use an outhouse. Here's a here's a cellar. Now uh, you see these a lot up here. You see them a lot. A lot of people think they're storm cellars, but they're not. They are actual cellars for cooling food and keeping food. And here is your smokehouse. Do this to preserve food. And the old homestead. Put the door wide open. To the back porch. Very rickety. More of the paper. Wallpaper. Varmint dung in here. I know that lots of people come up here, but it's still a, kind of a spooky sight. There at the fireplace, the, and the ceilings are very, very low. Very low. The old homestead. It's all downhill from here. Ponca is right down there, low water bridge. So we explored Beaver Gems and the uh, cabin, but uh, it shows that there's a path. This is very thin and small. This is huge and that's the way to go. Go that way, go left. And there were ticks.
itty bitty seed ticks. I'm gonna have to go change my shoes. Here's the low water bridge. And that would be the higher bridge. This is the main bridge. But this is, uh, sometimes it's underwater. I've seen it well underwater. I'm gonna walk across, but you can drive across. Well, after about two to three miles of walking, I finally made it to the Hawksbill Crag at Whitaker Point. There it is, right there on this beautiful overlook. It's a rough drive coming up, but it's a cool place. Man, oh man, what a day, what a trip, what a hike. What a lunch. Now, if I can just reach the end of this gravel road in the middle of the wilderness, we will get to our last destination, which is basically, hopefully, Clarksville, Arkansas. I have no idea what tomorrow we'll have in store, but it's the end of a long day. Glad I purchased new tires Friday. Today's Saturday. <laughs> Thanks for tagging along. And I'll see you next time. Later.